This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this uh, lecture is on the chapter on international operations, uh, which is only a short chapter, and it's all uh, written. There are no calculations, so um, it's a bit more what you might call background reading. Uh, but what it relates to is quite simply, if we want to trade abroad in any way, uh, well, what sort of ways can we go about it? Um, and it relates slightly to uh, what we did way back when we looked at the discounted cash flow techniques. Uh, we had an exercise there, which is very popular in the exam, of setting an, op an operation abroad. And if you remember, there were the complications of um, converting the currency and so on. Uh, but anyway, let's just quickly run through the note, although I'm not going to read every word to you. I mean, make sure you read it yourself. But first of all, uh, forms, ways of which we might operate abroad. Uh, the most obvious way is simply to export from the home country, uh, which is fine as it says uh, there's low risk, low capital needs. We've already got the operation in our home country, uh, but little local knowledge, a slow response. To give the market what it wants. You know, it's all being sent from the home country. Another way is to actually set up an overseas branch, have an office overseas. Uh, it says they're cheap to run. Uh, perhaps more commonly and certainly for calculation questions, back to discounted cash flow, is to actually set up an overseas subsidiary. Uh, where we might actually uh, produce abroad so we can be more responsive to the market. Um, as it says, there may be local grants and so on. Uh, but it obviously takes longer and you've got more foreign exchange risk. Uh, another way, a joint venture. Uh, partner with a company already in the foreign country so they've got local knowledge. Um, and it, it can be cheaper. Uh, or finally, licensing or franchising. Uh, where instead of setting up our sales, a bit like, I mean, most of the American chains, like McDonald's, uh, uh, Starbucks, uh, in most uh, countries in which they operate, it's actually a franchise arrangement where a local business runs the operation, but they're paying a license fee, they're paying royalties uh, to McDonald's or to um, Starbucks. Uh, having said that, uh, obviously, when it comes to things like setting up a subsidiary, um, we want to get money back to the home country, so the next section is ways of remitting uh, the income How can we get the money back to the home country? Um, as I've written, the obvious one is dividends. Uh, the only thing is, uh, depending on the country, there might be limits on uh, the dividends that are payable abroad. Uh, there are obviously tax implications. Uh, loan interest, lend them money and then charge interest on it. Again, there can be tax implications. Uh, charging royalties. Obviously, uh, in the case of land licensing or franchising the operation, um, but no royalties are quite common. Again, look back if you need to the um, net present value example we did uh, on a foreign subsidiary. Over the page, charge and management charge. I think a fairly obvious one, but all different ways of getting money back to the home country. Uh, transfer pricing. We're not worried particularly here about the arithmetic. That was more in the performance management exams. Uh, but uh, sell goods from the home country to the subsidiary, charge them for it. But again, most countries have rules to make sure it is an arm's length transfer price, that we're not using it if you like to cheat or to get money back um, sort of unfairly. Uh, counter trade. 
Um, less likely, to be honest. But uh, swap uh, goods uh, from the home country and in return get goods back from the other country or vice versa. Uh, finally, it's mentioned there of political risk. Uh, the big risk is uh, exchange rate movements, and we deal with all that in a separate chapter, how to minimise um, or reduce the exchange rate risk. But political risk, there are the two sorts as you've got there. Uh, macro risk, uh, that applies throughout the country, political instability, um, outbreak of war, confiscation of assets, exchange controls. Um, Obviously, it depends on the country. Some countries are perhaps less risky, although I was about to say perhaps America, but you know, they've got all these bringing in all these uh, tariffs and so on. So, there's always the risk if you invest in a foreign country of things changing, uh, which makes your business and therefore your income more risky. Uh, the other one is micro risk, which are factors that relate more to the specific company. Minimum wage legislation, pollution controls, obviously pollution doesn't apply to every type of company, but may apply to our particular business. Legislation relating to the products we make, health safety uh, issues. So there's, uh, there's always those risks involved if we choose to invest in a foreign country. And as to how you can manage that risk, well, other than not risking investing in the first place, uh, there may be insurances you can get. Uh, the private insurance are from the state. In our own country, they want to encourage exports abroad. Uh, and so the state may be, um, have some sort of scheme whereby you can get insurance against these sorts of risks. Um, not really managing risk so much, but even so, getting grants. Uh, from the particular government, wherever we're investing. You know, they might want foreign investment and we prefer to give us grants or give us assurances. Um, uh, get local debt. You know, instead of uh, entirely equity finance uh, from the home country, raise debt in the foreign country and then at least, if there is instability, our income may be at risk, but equally, uh, we may be able to manage it by way of the interest payable in the uh, foreign country. Or, of course, something I mentioned earlier, a joint venture, where you're sharing the risk with a local uh, business, and the local business may be more aware uh, of these sort of problems than we are, uh, given that they're based in the country. So, not a lot there. I say again, more background reading. But uh, a lot of things that you could perhaps bring in to a written part uh, of a question uh, when we are investing abroad.